Hey everyone, Aaron Rift here from youtube.com slash Aaron Rift, of course. I am here to talk about my top 35 episodes of The Simpsons. Like many of you, I grew up with The Simpsons. I remember back when I was eight years old watching Bart Simpson do his antics. I remember in second grade how popular Bart Simpson was. That's how long this darn show has been around. I'm 34 now. It's been around forever. Almost forever, it seems, at least. Now, it was really tough for me to narrow it down to 35 episodes. There are so many great Simpsons episodes over the years. I was originally going to go as low as 30, but there were a few episodes I definitely wanted to include. Plus, there's that reference to the line from Homer, only 35 calories. Let me know which episode that line is from. And here's a hint, it's one of the 35 episodes I will be talking about. It's also interesting to note, as I came up with this list, that only one episode is from the 21st century. Say what you will, but I really feel that the best episodes were in the 1990s. To me, that was the real golden age of The Simpsons. With that being said, let's get down to the list. 215, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? So as you'll notice here, this is from the second season. I skipped over the first season because I felt that while there were a lot of good episodes, I felt that the characters were still being developed and the show was still a work in progress. For instance, there's one episode where Homer is basically the voice of reason and it's the rest of the family that's acting up. By the second season, things would reverse and Homer would become the lovable dimwit that we all know and love. Now this episode I think is a perfect example of Homer really coming into his own and the rest of the world feeling sorry that they ever came into contact with the Simpsons family. In this episode Homer finds his long lost twin brother Herbert after Abe the father has a heart attack and I love this sequence here with the brother of Dr. Hibbert. Nice funny bit there. And finally, we have the meeting of Homer and Herbert. Herbert is the opposite of Homer in the sense that he is rich financially, but doesn't have a family. Each one has what the other guy wants. So I like the storyline here. I think it's very well done. And of course, Homer ruins everything. He makes this ridiculous car and Herbert is basically not paying attention because he's so focused on spending time with the family. I think that this episode is great, and it's definitely what I would consider to be the first real classic in the Simpsons series. 218, Brush With Greatness. This episode has a special appearance by Ringo Starr, who I believe is the first, or one of the first, major celebrities to appear on The Simpsons. And I love this opening bit with Mount Splashmore, Krusty singing the song, the family showing up, Homer getting stuck in the water slide. Great stuff right there. Homer vows to lose weight. And while he's doing that, Marge takes up painting. And she gets discouraged when Mr. Burns asks her to paint a portrait of him. And when Mr. Burns is at the house, he insults Homer's weight. Homer breaks down crying and Marge gets frustrated. And then she receives a letter from Ringo Starr, which motivates her. And she does, in fact, make that painting of Mr. Burns. And Mr. Burns was just happy that Marge did not make fun of his genitalia. Really funny stuff. Very entertaining episode and one of my early favorites. 3-1, Stark Raving Dad. So this episode kicked off the third season. And this episode featured one of the all-time biggest celebrities to appear on The Simpsons, of course, Michael Jackson. Homer gets his clothes mixed in with Bart's hat, so therefore Homer has a pink shirt and that ends up in a mental institution, which leads to an encounter with a man who sounds just like Michael Jackson. Homer Simpson from The Simpsons meets Michael Jackson from The Jacksons. But of course, Bart and Lisa and everyone else realizes it's not the real Michael Jackson. It's Lisa's birthday and she feels let down by Bart but Bart is able to work with this imposter in order to create a very memorable birthday present for Lisa. So a very nice heartwarming episode, funny episode, lots of good jokes in this one. And 
There was actually a reference to my dad. My dad was a rock musician in the 1980s and he was actually friends with Matt Groening for a period of time in the 80s. And the name Leon Kapowski from Patterson, New Jersey, that was a reference to my dad. My dad's birth name was Robert Polakowski, which is similar sounding, and my dad was also from Patterson, New Jersey. This is, in fact, a true story, believe it or not. But yeah, so for personal reasons, I really like this episode, but it's still an all-time classic as well. 3-4, Bart the Murderer. This episode was the introduction of Fat Tony and his crew, and a lot of references in this episode to the Godfather and other mafia films. You have Bart who is down on his luck, having a lot of bad things happening to him, and he ends up becoming part of Fat Tony's crew, working for them, mixing drinks. He's given a fancy suit to wear. But then one day, Bart shows up late to work and says it's because of his principal. Fat Tony decides to pay a visit to Principal Skinner, and Skinner ends up disappearing. Bart thinks that Fat Tony did it, but the blame is put on Bart, Bart is put on trial, and then all of a sudden Principal Skinner returns and reveals that it was all a misunderstanding, that it was a freak accident that caused Skinner to disappear. And I like how Fat Tony shows up in Skinner's office and Skinner basically just tells them to leave and they do so. Uh, so this was a very funny episode and you really got to see Bart involved in something significant for one of the first times in the series. 310, Flaming Moe's. This episode was one of the first episodes to really feature Moe in a key role, Moe the bartender, before he became totally uncool. In this episode, he steals Homer's idea for the flaming Homer drink. Moe names it the Flaming Moe. Lenny's hair gets set on fire. And Homer is basically shut out. You really feel bad for Homer in this episode because he actually created something and somebody else is taking credit for it. I feel bad for him. And Marge tries to tell him you're making people happy. And Homer sarcastically responds. Great stuff there. You have Aerosmith making a special appearance in this episode. I like Homer um, up in the rafters revealing the secret ingredient at the end, and then of course Moe is back to his old ways again, him and Homer make up. But yeah, this, this episode, one of the best episodes of the early years in my opinion. 4-3, Homer the Heretic. In this episode, Homer makes the decision to no longer go to church because it's better to just kick back on Sundays, lie in bed, never want to leave this bed, but he's got to take a whiz. You have Homer dancing around, watching the Three Stooges. This is classic Homer. This episode is, is all about Homer. You have him doing his own thing, but then he accidentally sets his house on fire, and you have people from all different faiths come into Homer's aid. You have Christian, Hindu, other, making the save for Homer, and he realizes that everybody can work together regardless of religion. I like the message of this episode, plus it has a lot of funny moments. 4-9, Mr. Plow. Mr. Plow, that's my name. That name again is Mr. Plow. I'll try not to sing anymore if I can help it. This episode is another classic where you have Homer buying a plow truck and he decides to make some money by plowing driveways. It's a fun episode where you have Homer and his good friend Barney becoming enemies for a brief period of time where Barney decides to get into Homer's business and he takes a few shortcuts including shooting out Homer's tires and then he decides to do a commercial where he beats up a cardboard cutout of Homer but then Homer decides to screw over Barney by having Barney go up into a mountain while Homer can plow other people's driveways Barney gets stuck, Homer realizes he made a mistake and comes to Barney's rescue. They decide they're going to team up, but then in the heavens above, all of a sudden the snow goes away and it's sunny again and they're both screwed. Um, I love this episode. Great episode. One of the most memorable jingles of the early 1990s and, uh, you know, Mr. Plow's jacket would make a lot of appearances in future episodes, little cameos here and there. 
referenced several times throughout the series because it is one of the all-time greats. 413, Selma's Choice. Of all the Patty and Selma episodes, I think that this one is probably my favorite one. I like the one where Homer borrows money from them. That's a great one, but that's not on my list. The reason I put this one on my list is because, first of all, you have Hans Molman and Selma going out on a date, which is great. And you have Homer obsessed with a sandwich. I, I, I find this so funny with the sandwich turning colors and Homer turning colors as he's getting sicker, but he still cannot resist eating the sandwich. Uh, this leads to Selma taking Bart and Lisa to Duff Gardens and of course the classic song. Guess I gotta sing again. Duff beer for me, Duff beer for you, I'll have a Duff, you have one too. And then my voice is even cracking on that, so I apologize for the terrible singing. But I love the song so much and Lisa drinks the water and goes crazy. Um, th this was just an all-time classic episode, another great one. Um, and then you have Selma realizing that maybe having a kid isn't totally necessary and she finds happiness in other ways. So it has a nice message at the end. 415, I love Lisa. In this episode we have Ralph Wiggum, poor Ralph. He's the dumb kid at school who gets no valentines, nobody likes him, but Lisa, feeling bad for him, decides to give him a card, I choo choo choose you. Ralph at this point becomes obsessed with Lisa, and he will do anything for her, and Homer definitely takes advantage of that, and has Ralph go to work up on the roof. The fumes make him dizzy, and Homer says, they'll do that. Ralph takes Lisa to an event, and at this point, Lisa gets fed up with Ralph. Ralph calls Lisa his girlfriend, and Lisa freaks out. Ralph feels really bad. They, they do a play together, and in the end, things work out. Lisa says, let's be friends. Um, really fun episode. Lots of great laughs, and of course, um, a, good, a good message in this episode, and, and uh, you know, one of those episodes that has a good blend of comedy and some seriousness to it. And uh, you really feel for the characters in this episode. 5-1, Homer's Barbershop Quartet. What I love about this episode is the references to the Beatles. I'm a huge Beatles fan. Pretty much the entire episode is nothing but Beatles jokes. You have the Bigger Than Jesus album cover, of course, playing off of John Lennon's comments and of course the album cover looking like Abbey Road. You have Yoko Uno with Barney in this instance. Um, they form the Barbershop Quartet. They have Meet the B-Sharps which is a parody of the Meet the Beatles album. Just all the Beatles references I, I think it's so cool uh, that they did, they did this episode. And then of course they have the reunion after they break up on the roof just like Let It Be. Um, so if you're a Beatles fan, I mean, th this is a must-watch episode. 5-2, Cape Fear. There have been a lot of Sideshow Bob episodes over the years, but I would have to say my favorite is Cape Fear from season five. Sideshow Bob, of course, framing Krusty the Clown. He tried to kill Selma, I believe, in season three. And in season five, he's on a mission to kill Bart. Die, Bart, die. But... In German, the Bart, the. Um, I love this episode. It's a parody, obviously, of the Cape Fear movie. You have the Simpson family having to basically go into hiding. Um, the whole Homer Thompson bit is really funny. And then you have Homer in a chainsaw freaking out Bart. You have that bit where Sideshow Bob keeps stepping on the rakes. A lot of funny moments in this show. Uh, Sideshow Bob is just such a great character. And then, of course... Bart stalling for time on the boat at the end, and finally Bob meets his demise. Just a great episode, lots of funny moments. One of the funniest episodes in the entire series, in my opinion. 5-3, Homer goes to college. So in this episode, we have Homer going to college so he can go back to his job at the nuclear power plant. Apparently this was the best photo that they could come up with for his application. Homer shows up, he calls a guy walking by a nerd, I love that. 
He messes with the pig mascot pulling the tail. He gets into a lot of trouble with his nerd friends, but it's the nerd friends that end up coming to his aid and helping him out. I think that this is a very funny episode. This is all about the humor and just the idea of Homer Simpson, of all people, going to college. It's so absurd and so ridiculous, but that's what makes it so damn hilarious. 513, Homer and Apu. In this episode, Homer gets sick eating at Apu's Quickie Mart. Homer shows up, he decides to go undercover, and he puts on this giant-sized novelty hat with the camera, and there's a buzzing noise in it, so he smashes it, and then a, a hot dog falls on the ground with a bunch of bandages and bugs, and Apu picks it up. Ever since this episode, Anytime I go into a 7-Eleven and I look at the hot dogs, I freak out. I think of The Simpsons every time I go in there. Um, so thanks a lot, Simpsons. You had Apu getting fired as a result. He, he shows up at The Simpsons' house to apologize for his behavior. They sing a song, Who Needs the Quickie Mark? Great song. But then Apu comes to terms with the situation and realizes he does need the Quickie Mark and he misses his job. Homer vows to help Apu get his job back, and through a lot of struggle, they show up at the Quickie Mart World Headquarters, only to be turned away, but things work out, and Apu takes a bullet for James Woods and is able to get his job back at the Quickie Mart. 515, Deep Space Homer. Homer Simpson in space. Earlier, I talked about how ridiculous it was for Homer Simpson to be going to college. Ima imagine Homer going into space. In this episode, you have Homer and Barney uh, being selected. Uh, NASA's trying to generate some publicity and get some ratings, so they want to have an average guy, some Joe Schmo, go into space. It's down to Homer and Barney. In a way, they're both winners, but in a more accurate way, Barney is the winner, which leads to Barney drinking and going crazy. So Homer does end up going into space, um, but he loses control. He, he starts acting up. He starts opening up a bag of potato chips, and as he's eating the chips, they break the, the, the ant colony glass, and the ants come all over the place, and... They have to come back to Earth, and it's very intense, and everyone's freaking out, wonder if they'll make it back alive, but they do, uh, thanks to a carbon rod. And that, that's what this whole episode was about, Homer wanting respect. Um, the rod got the award at the nuclear power plant in the beginning of the episode. Homer wanted to gain respect from everybody, but in the end, it's the carbon rod that saves the day again. 518, Burns's Air. I love this episode. To me, this is perhaps the funniest episode of The Simpsons, period. Um, this, this might be the most hilarious episode, in my opinion. Um, you have Bart and several other people auditioning to be Mr. Burns' heir. Mr. Burns feels like he's going to die soon, and he needs somebody to inherit his estate. And of course, it cannot be Smithers, because Smithers is going to be buried alive with Mr. Burns. You have Bart reading off a cue card from Homer. Um, I, I love this bit. Great bit here. One of the bits where I'll just laugh out loud every time I watch it. You have Bart winning the job, getting the gig, whatever you want to call it, because of the fact that Bart decides to vandalize Mr. Burns' mansion, throwing rocks into the windows and so forth. Um, Bart ends up really liking Mr. Burns, but starts to miss his family. And at this point, Mr. Burns puts on this this act where he, he gets these actors to dress up like the Simpsons family. And um, you have the one guy saying Bo instead of Doe. Um, really funny stuff here. And of course, Hans Molman again. I love Hans Molman. He's such a great character. And he ends up becoming Bart's replacement while Bart is gone. But then once Bart is back, um, He's introduced as Bart's new brother. And Homer loves kissing his forehead because it's like kissing a peanut. And Marge says, I want that thing out of my house. 6-4, Itchy and Scratchy Land. So when I was thinking about my top 35 episodes, I was considering this episode and also the episode where 
itchy and scratchy gets closed down because of the bum winning the lawsuit against them. But I went with this one because of the Disneyland references. I, th I think it's a really funny episode making fun of Disney uh, with the itchy and scratchy land. We don't take itchy and scratchy money. You have Bart raising hell, um, stepping on the foot of the actor. You have Homer acting up. And then, of course, you have the robots going crazy and uh, attacking everyone, becoming evil. And luckily, the Simpsons use the cameras to stop the robots. And I, I think this, this episode also has a good um, moment where the family works together. The whole premise was that Marge was frustrated that the family could never have a vacation where um, they're spending time together. And in this, this instance, they actually spend time together and they do something productive, even if it's saving their own lives. 6-8, Lisa on Ice. This is one of my favorite episodes, not just for the humor, but also the storytelling and the relationship between Bart and Lisa in this episode. Lisa does very poorly in sports and she's trying to make up for that. Um, and eventually she joins a hockey team. And Bart is also part of a hockey team, which leads to a sibling rivalry between the two of them. And I love Homer. He's making a big deal out of sports. Sports, 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 sports. And it leads to further tensions between Bart and Lisa. And eventually it's the two teams going at it. And they eventually realize that they love each other and it's ridiculous for them to be fighting. Homer, of course, is crying. He's upset because they're both losers. And of course, everything ends in chaos with all the convicts fighting and everybody in the stands fighting while Bart and Lisa go off happily ever after. I, I love this episode. Definitely one of my favorites. This might be my top five of all time. Definitely towards the top. 612, Homer the Great. Stonecutters, another classic episode here where you have a secret club that Homer wants to join. Um, I love the bit with Lenny and Carl, the shut up. Uh, that, that's a great bit. You have Homer finally figuring things out by um, using the yellow drip road to get to the Stonecutters headquarters. And he's watching at the top, the glass breaks. Homer joins the club, but then he screws things up by using the sacred parchment as a uh, napkin and they they disrobe him and put on the stone of shame but then they see the birthmark which is the symbol of the stone cutters so homer becomes um, their new leader and he gets the stone of triumph which is even bigger than the stone of shame um, homer of course abuses his powers and they get frustrated and they decide to form a no homers club but of course, one Homer is allowed and that, that hick Homer gets in and Homer is shut out. A uh, really funny episode. Uh, the Stonecutter song is very memorable. Uh, definitely one of the better episodes in the series. 615, Homie the Clown. Here we have another episode with Fat Tony. Uh, maybe the second best Fat Tony episode. I also like this episode uh, for Homer and Krusty's interactions with each other. You have Homer wanting to go to Krusty's Clown College. Homer does in fact get into the college and you have a lot of funny bits with Homer and Krusty in this episode. You have that classic segment, one of the all-time classic segments in the history of the series where Homer beats up the Hamburglar and the kid's like, stop, stop, he's already dead. Um, Homer then of course gets into trouble because Fat Tony mistakes Homer for Krusty the Clown, and Krusty has to show up and make the save for Homer. They have to do the trick around the loop, and uh, it's a fun episode. It, it's a really funny one, and uh, all the characters in this episode shine. And of course, the classic bit with the kid. 618, A Star is Burns. So in this episode, you have the critic, who I believe was a character from another TV show, a short-lived TV show, if my memory serves me correct. But this episode has a lot of funny moments. You have them singing the Oscar Mayer Wiener song. The critic's basically outshining Homer in every way. Not only can he sing the Oscar Mayer Wiener song, but he can belch better than Homer. Homer gets frustrated. Um, they have a big film festival, and Mr. Burns is determined to win the festival, uh, but Barney 
uh, produces this very touching video which everybody loves and Mr. Burns gets frustrated when people boo his movie but Burns is thinking that the people are chanting Boo Earns. Uh, of course, Hans Molman was chanting Boo Earns. Oh, and by the way, Man Getting Hit by Football was another classic bit. In my opinion, that should have won the damn film festival, and Homer thought so too, but Homer eventually came to his senses and went with the right winner, so he had the nice happy ending, and Mr. Burns lost, despite hiring Steven Spielbergo. 6.20 Two Dozen and One Greyhounds. In this episode, you have Santa's little helper finding a girlfriend. You have a lot of references to 101 Dalmatians with the spaghetti scene. And then, of course, you have all the puppies being born. One of the things about The Simpsons and the humor, they, they have these jokes where you expect it to go one way, and then they take you in a completely different direction. In this case, you have... 23 dogs, 24 dogs, and then you see the clock going by with hours passing and you think they're gonna have something like 50 dogs, but then they say 25. Um, so it's a nice little twist and they do this a lot in the series. That's part of the humor of the show, um, having a punchline that's something completely opposite of what you're expecting. Um, in this episode, you have funny bits with the cat. I feel so bad for the cat not getting the attention, but you have Mr. Burns up to his old evil tricks um, wanting to use the dogs for fur coats. And of course we have the, the classic song, See My Vest, uh, which is a parody um, from Beauty and the Beast. Um, so you had a, a bunch of different Disney parodies in this episode. Fun stuff here. Uh, Mr. Burns comes to his senses and doesn't kill the puppies, but decides to make them all a bunch of Greyhound winners. And Homer, it looks like Homer hung himself, but of course he was just messing with the light as his way to forget about what had happened with the dogs making a ton of money for Mr. Burns. So again, a joke where you're expecting one thing when it's actually something completely different. 7-5, Lisa the Vegetarian. In this episode, we see Lisa becoming a vegetarian. And I love this bit here with uh, Homer, Bart, and even Marge making fun of Lisa, singing the song, You Don't Make Friends With Salad. You Don't Make Friends With Salad. It's a pretty catchy song. Um, Lisa gets frustrated when the meat is literally shoved in her face. Homer has this big barbecue. Lisa decides to get rid of the pig, and the pig ends up airborne. And um, you have Mr. Burns saying he'll, he'll donate money when pigs fly. And then, of course, he sees the pig flying, but he still doesn't donate because he's evil Mr. Burns. Um, Lisa has a talk with Paul McCartney. Once again, another Beatles member makes an appearance. And the lesson of this story is a good one, teaching that you should be tolerant of others, even if you disagree with their lifestyle. It's a nice message. So you had the, the balance of humor and also tell, telling a good story and having, having a solid message. 7-7, seven, seven, King Size Homer. Just when you thought Homer Simpson was fat enough, in this episode, Homer decides to take it to the next level and get on disability by becoming morbidly obese. If the paper turns clear, it's your window to weight gain. Bart helps Homer gain all this weight so he can become disabled. You have Homer having his computer set up in his home to start press the any key. Homer decides to order a tab, but it's too late, he's got work to do, and he learns he can improve his productivity by using uh, the bird, the little bird hourglass thingy, um, but of course that ends up not working out for him, and Homer has to show up at the nuclear power plant to stop a meltdown, and as it turns out, Homer's fat ends up saving the power plant and the city. And in the end, Mr. Burns is in debt to Homer, and Homer asks to be brought back to his old weight. Mr. Burns guarantees it, but after Homer struggles just to do one or two push-ups, Mr. Burns says, screw it, I'll pay for the liposuction. Uh, this, this is a hilarious episode. Again, um, classic stuff. Has to be in my top ten for sure, maybe even my top five. 7-8, Mother Simpson. This is one of the most heartwarming episodes of The Simpsons, in my opinion. 
I wasn't really a big fan of the sequel they did years later, but I really like this episode when we get to see Mother Simpson be introduced. Homer fakes his death, with, which leads to Mother Simpson making her appearance from hiding. She had an incident with Mr. Burns several years earlier when Homer was a kid. She went into hiding. You have Mr. Burns seeing a picture of her and then seeing her at the post office, which leads to a parody of Dragnet with the detectives um, trying to uh, find her whereabouts. You have Chief Wiggum talking into his wallet, which is a great bit. But Wiggum, during the period in the 60s, um, it was thanks to Mother Simpson that Wiggum was able to get rid of his asthma. And as a result, he decides to tip her off and she is able to escape town before getting arrested. You have a, a, an emotional goodbye between Homer and his mother. And then one of the most touching endings to a Simpsons episode with Homer gazing out into the stars after he departs from his mother. 712, Team Homer. This is a really fun episode with a fun side story as well. You have the main story being Homer forming a bowling team and you have Mr. Burns getting involved and becoming part of the group. The other guys don't like it because Mr. Burns is just absolutely terrible at it, but they have no other choice. They have to go with it because it's Homer's boss. You have the side story where Bart buys a t-shirt from Mad Magazine and that leads to Springfield Elementary having to use uniforms. But in the main story, which is what this episode's mainly about, you have Homer's team somehow managing to win, but evil Mr. Burns, of course, takes the trophy. Uh, but in the end, Homer, Apu, Mo, and Otto, they realize that friendship is the most important thing, and who cares if they won? They have each other. So another great message and a very funny episode. 713, Two Bad Neighbors. In this episode, you have George Bush, the former president of the United States, the 41st president of the United States, moving next door to the Simpsons. What could possibly go wrong here, right? You have Bart being like Dennis the Menace, giving Bush a hard time. Bush decides to spank Bart, which leads to Homer freaking out and a feud going on between Homer Simpson and George Bush. You have them pulling pranks on George Bush and Bush responds by writing two bad neighbors and hanging up a, a nice little portrait of Bart and Homer on the top of his house. Um, eventually it leads to a fight between the two of them and the Bushes end up moving out, being driven out of Springfield by Homer Simpson and Bart Simpson. Um, classic antics, another all-time great Simpsons episode in my opinion. 717, Homer the Smithers. In this episode, you have Mr. Smithers taking a vacation. Mr. Burns decides to get a substitute assistant, which ends up being Homer Simpson because Smithers figures Homer Simpson is the one guy that cannot outshine him. But as it turns out, Homer, despite setting the cornflakes on fire and having Mr. Burns' office set on fire, somehow manages to pull through. Smithers gets fired, which leads to a fight between Homer and Smithers. Oh, and I love the bit when Homer and Smithers devise this plan to call Mr. Burns' mother. They have this big fight, and Mr. Burns gets knocked out of the window all the way down to the ground, and Mr. Smithers is back in power as Mr. Burns' assistant, and Homer and the Simpsons family gets a nice fruit basket for helping push Mr. Burns out of the window to the ground. Um, th this was a great episode, really funny episode. Love all, the, love all the interactions between Homer and Mr. Burns, and of course Homer and Smithers as well. 8-8, eight, eight, Hurricane Nettie. Now we're into season eight of The Simpsons, which in my opinion was the last really great season of the show. Um, you have Hurricane Nettie, which has perhaps my all-time favorite segment in a Simpsons episode. You have a hurricane which only destroys one house. The most religious guy in the town, Ned Flanders, is the victim of this hurricane. And... 
the Simpsons and everyone else in town, they volunteered to rebuild Flanders' house, but they screw it up really badly, and Ned just snaps. He freaks out in one of the great moments in show history when he lashes out. He basically rips into everybody. He calls Mo an angry, hate-filled man, and Mo questions what the third thing was. You have Flanders yelling at Krusty saying he's the only buffoon that doesn't make him laugh. He says Homer Simpson is the worst person he's ever known, and Homer feels he got off lightly. Uh, Flanders checks himself into an insane asylum. They try to find the source of Ned's problem, which ends up being his parents. You have Homer there talking to Ned. Um, funny stuff as well at the end, but I really think that that segment where Ned just loses it completely has got to be one of the funniest things in Simpsons history, in my opinion. 812, Mountain of Madness. This episode is all about the message of teamwork and Mr. Burns wanting his employees at the nuclear power plant to get along better and work together as a team. Homer brings his family along, of course, and I love this bit here with uh, who can prevent forest fires and Bart picks you, but the answer is me referring to you. Um, that, that's a funny bit right there. And um, you have Homer and Mr. Burns being a team, and Homer is freaking out, but then realizes Mr. Burns is a guaranteed victory. And Mr. Burns, of course, is willing to use a shortcut. They get there first, but due to an avalanche, they end up getting stuck, and the two of them start getting paranoid with each other. You have Mr. Smithers, who's basically working alone and freaking out that he's going to be fired, but in the end... Mr. Burns decides to fire nobody. Um, I also like the bit with Lenny and Carl with the aw oh, nuts. That, that's another funny one. And of course, the stuff between Homer and Mr. Burns in the cabin. Uh, great episode. 814, The Itchy and Scratchy and Poochie Show. This is one of my favorite Itchy and Scratchy related episodes where you have the new character of Poochie being introduced because they're trying to boost up ratings and interest from kids and they figure a new character will spice things up. Uh, I love this bit with um, Roger Meyer yelling at the kids and Ralph crying. They come up with this new character. Homer shows up for the auditions, shows a lot of attitude and ends up getting the job. But when the episode airs, it's basically a flop. Nobody thinks Poochie is cool. Everyone hates him. Homer feels bad. He feels that Poochie is misunderstood. He does this speech for the next episode, which ends up being edited, and Homer freaks out over that, and they quickly kill off Poochie, and Poochie died on the way back to his home planet. Um, really funny episode, and um, I miss Poochie. Such a, such a great guy. I agree. He was misunderstood. 823, Homer's Enemy. Homer's Enemy, which is generally considered to be one of the best episodes of the series. I would not say it, it's my all-time favorite or one of my all-time favorites, but I think it's a very funny episode, and it's, it's very highly regarded, so I figured I would include it in this list. You have Homer um, meeting his new co-worker, who's a very average guy, Frank Grimes, and Frank Grimes is just... He is perplexed by Homer Simpson, how this complete buffoon can be so successful at everything he does. And it gets to the point where Frank just completely loses his cool. He freaks out. He starts doing all these stupid things to be like Homer Simpson. But then he decides to put his hands on um, high voltage cables, and that's the end of Frank Grimes. Um, you have to feel bad for Frank Grimes, or grimy as Homer put him. Um, he just did not fit into this world of The Simpsons. I guess the idea for this episode was how a normal person would react to being in Homer Simpson's world, and obviously he did not handle it very well. 10-2, The Wizard of Evergreen Terrace. Now we move on a couple of years later. I felt that after the eighth season, the series really started to decline in quality, and there were fewer and fewer really good episodes, but there are a few that stood out to me and in this one you have Homer basically wanting to come up with an invention like Thomas Edison and he's determined to come up with something. At one point he comes up with 
a, a makeup gun. I love this, this shot here um, to Marge with the gun. Um, Homer comes up with a bunch of wacky inventions and as it turns out, he does come up with something at the end, this chair. And um, I, I think it's a real fun episode and definitely one of the better episodes um, past the eighth season. I believe this one was 98 or 99, somewhere around there. Um, I just enjoy all the references to Thomas Edison and um, I, I think it's a creative episode. 11-3. Guess who's coming to criticize dinner? I really like the premise of this episode, the idea of Homer Simpson being a food critic. I think it's just a natural storyline for Homer Simpson's character. And I think that if it was a more recent episode, Homer would have been a Yelp reviewer. Uh, South Park would later do that, I guess you could say. Simpsons did it. In this episode, Homer applies to be a food critic and there's tons of spelling errors and typos and that's a funny bit in itself. But then you have Lisa helping him out and Homer starts to become a successful critic. But Homer is too positive and ends up going in the opposite direction where he starts criticizing everything, much like Yelp reviewers. Um, all the owners of the restaurants and the workers decide to kill Homer Simpson by creating a dessert that is so high in calories that it will kill him. Homer is about to eat the dessert when Lisa yells out that it's low in fat and that is what causes Homer to not eat it. He throws it away, it explodes, and um, the, the French guy who created it gets arrested. Um, I thought that this was a really fun episode, definitely one of the better episodes of the later seasons. And later seasons, this is like 1999 later seasons. 11-5, E-I-E-I, Annoyed Grunt. For this episode, we have Homer Simpson messing with the wrong guy, and Homer decides to challenge various people to a duel, but then he, he challenges a southern gentleman who accepts the duel. Homer decides to have his family leave Springfield. They go on to a secluded farm where they create their own product, tomaco, which is a combination of tomatoes and tobacco. Uh, just really silly concept, but it's very memorable. To me, this was a really memorable episode. You have Bart becoming addicted to the tomaco, and then you have even the animals, the farm animals going crazy and um, attacking the, the, uh, the corporation that wanted to uh, sabotage Homer's business. Um, so they got what, what they had coming to them. And then, of course, at the end, Homer and his family show back up at the house, and the, the guy is still there ready to duel. Uh, I thought that this was a really entertaining episode. 14-2, How I Spent My Strummer Vacation. And finally, the last episode on my list, the only episode I have on my list from the 21st century, How I Spent My Strummer Vacation from season 14. Um, what I love about this episode, I love all the different celebrities that were in it, all the different rock personalities. You have the Rolling Stones, Elvis Costello, Lenny Kravitz, Tom Petty. Homer goes to this rock and roll fantasy camp. You have a Pooh Otto and a bunch of other, other characters there. And uh, this is a really fun episode. Just the interaction between Homer and the rock stars makes for a really fun episode. To me, it's really memorable, but a lot of it is due to the involvement of the celebrities. And I like the little bit at the end during the credits when they show the live action sequences of um, the rock stars doing their lines. And of course, you have the, uh, the big conflict at the end between uh, the celebrities and, and Homer, but then they end up patching things up in the end. So there you have it for my top 35 episodes of The Simpsons. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought, which episodes you thought maybe should not have been on this list, or what episodes you think should have been on this list. Leave a comment. Let me know your favorite episodes, your least favorite episodes. I'm curious, what do you think are the worst Simpsons episodes? Leave a comment on YouTube. Let me know what you think. Subscribe if you haven't already at youtube.com slash Aaron Rift. Thank you guys very much for checking out the video. I'll see you next time.